Welcome to my channel. I'm Holly and today I'm going to take you through some of the footage I took of me painting my latest painting entitled Captured Spider. I'm an artist living in New South Wales, Australia and I've been painting on and off for just over 20 years. I have a solo exhibition coming up in February here in my hometown so if you'd like to check out some of the work that will be in that exhibition just go to the website which is in the descri description below along with all the other links to my social media. So I do paint in both acrylic and oils, but this particular painting is in straight oils. Sometimes I block in the first layer in acrylic to speed things up, but it's summer here in Australia and with temperatures reaching into the 40s, thin layers of oil tend to dry pretty quick, like in a few hours, depending on the colour. Obviously a layer with a lot of white in it I wouldn't be able to touch for a few days unless I use Liquid Original as my painting medium. So you'll notice that when I first started filming, I was onto the second layer already, and that's because I was waiting for my new Panasonic Lumix G9 camera to arrive. So the idea behind this painting was to create Trump Roy effect, which, which simply means to paint something in such a way that you trick the viewer into actually thinking it's real. Although I don't know from a purest sense whether it is actually Trump Roy because I didn't paint the frame as well. But anyway, if you Google it, you'll see plenty of examples of this style of art. In the intro, you would have seen a brief glimpse of my setup for this painting. I use a shadow box which I made from a heavy duty moving box and I cut a hole in the side to fit a directional lamp so I can adjust the light, adjust the light however I like. This painting is really about contrasts and textures. The striped gift box was blue tacked to the back of a board and all the other elements were arranged in different compositions until I was happy with the result. I then took a photo using different settings on the camera to achieve different results. I repeated this process about 10 times, so at the end I had close to 100 reference photos to choose from. Whenever I do this process, I always inevitably end up choosing photos taken near the end of the session. For me it takes a while for the creative juices to get going, and just getting started some days is a real struggle, which I'm sure nearly all creatives can relate to. This light bulb gave me some real grief. I could see that it had four ridges in the screw, uh, in the screwing end, but each ridge had a really strong highlight, and shadow, and a base colour that was so thin I kept getting confused as to what went where. My mole stick, or the piece of wood that I'm leaning on, stops me from touching the board too much and allows me to steady my hand. It's probably the best $3 length of wood I've ever bought. So I use a range of brushes. I use Old Holland, Winsor & Newton, Trakel, which are probably my favourite. They've actually lasted the longest. Um, Art Spectrum, Simply Simmons, I've got a Michael James Smith set which is pretty awesome and generally just cheap brushes that I buy from $2 shops and things like that. Uh, I use a range of different sizes as you can see here I'm using Teeny Tiny, I think that particular one was a either a double zero or a triple zero, Windsor & Newton, um, right up to size 8, 10, 16 type brushes, whatever I need to make it work really.
So in terms of the paints that I use, you'll notice in the intro that I've laid out all my paints on my palette. Um, they're actually all the brands that I own. I don't own full sets of each, obviously. Um, usually I just buy what's on special, um, just as long as good quality paint. It has a pretty high pigment to filler ratio. So I use Art Spectrum, uh, Old Holland, Schminky, Winsor & Newton. With the acrylics, I used to use a lot of um, Liquitex Heavy Body. Um, not so much anymore. I'm more of a golden freak now. I love their fluid acrylics. Um, they're just beautiful to use. So in this section I'm painting the actual uh, thumbtack that's been pushed into the board next to the box. Um, so I put a, a darker edge on the left hand side of that the tack and then just softened it out uh, with a clean brush. And then here I'm actually just softening that shadow. Um, the edge was just a little bit too hard for my liking so I'm just gradually softening that out and it kind of looks like I'm not really doing anything it just looks like I'm really <laughs> pushing paint around on the on the board and not actually making a difference but it, it does the end result is actually going to be a lot softer here at the end. Those that harsh line between the darker area and the lighter area in that shadow um, will actually disappear and, and have that nice uh, shift between values across that shadow. The space that I actually paint in is in fact my lounge room. So in our old house I did actually have an entire room dedicated to use as a studio. Um, but you know, you don't really need a, a studio or a separate room as such to, to paint. Um, my advice to any artists that are just starting out is to just use what you have. If it means painting in your lounge room, then paint in your lounge room. Um, you know, a small setup in your bedroom, if it comes to that, you know, start where you are, use what you've got, um, cheap materials, I mean even now I still use cheap brushes, um, just use what you've got, start where you are and, um, and don't let anyone tell you that you can't do it, well, you know. So here I am again just fixing up the edges on the edge of the box. Um, obviously it's something that I want to come forward in the painting so I need those edges to be nice and sharp whereas if it was something that I wanted to move back in the painting then I would blow those edges out with, um, with a soft brush. Value gradations are also really important in terms of making something look really realistic. Um, really easy to achieve with oil paints, obviously they dry slower, a little bit trickier with acrylics, uh, but that's just a matter of adding layer upon layer and working from dark to light with acrylics and um, just taking your time and being patient with it. So here in a minute you can actually here it is, see my studio setup. So that takes up one entire side 
of my lounge room. And here is the finished painting. So I actually do all the frames myself. And yeah, I love that floating frame effect. Uh, so the board actually sits, sits flush with the top of the uh, wood. And yeah, thanks for watching. If you'd want to see more, there's the website. Thanks guys.